jacket gate. Joe Biden struggled to put on his suit jacket. That's the topic of today's Bold and Blunt, sort of. And I'm your host, Cheryl Chumley, giving you a Christian conservative look at today's news, politics, culture, and events. Did you see the video? Did you see the embarrassing video of Joe Biden struggling, struggling to put on his suit jacket while his wife, Jill, helpfully stood by and watched? If you haven't seen it, I suggest you go online and search for it and look for it and watch it. It's horrifying if you're an American citizen. It's horrifying because it's embarrassing. But more than that, it's horrifying because, once again, it's a national security risk. I'll get into all that. But before before we start talking about that, I want to give a quick shout out to edify.app. That is the online platform for faith-based podcasts. And I'm happy to say that Bold and Blunt is among its esteemed lineup. So go there, go to edify.app and find Bold and Blunt, download Bold and Blunt and listen to Bold and Blunt along with all the other great podcasts that this platform has to offer. You may also get Bold and Blunt, of course, at my employer, WashingtonTimes.com. Go there, check out the newsletter section at the bottom of the page and find my name, find my name and section under newsletters. And you can sign up for my three times a week newsletter. Comes out Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And within are contained my twice weekly Tuesday and Thursday Bold and Blunt podcasts, along with the commentaries that I write at the Washington Times exposing the far leftist loons who are not only running America, but trying to steamroll through this feckless White House administration, all the globalist visions and designs they have for a total world takeover. America, of course, is the last stumbling block to that takeover. And speaking of lunatics and loons, back to Joe Biden. Listen to this. Okay, if you're wondering what that is, that is the C-SPAN video recording of Joe Biden trying to put on his blue suit jacket outside the helicopter that he just exited. And that is the wind in the background. And In that short clip, most people, most Americans, most people of the world, I'm going to go out on a limb and say, would have already had their jacket put on, right? I played that for about three seconds. Takes about three seconds, say, for the average person just to slip on their suit jacket. It's not a difficult act. It's not a big physical challenge. But in that three-second time clip, Joe Biden's jacket still dangles from his right arm, flapping helplessly in the wind. Well, he looks, he looks with the black face mask on his face, he looks for the sleeve to grab. So let me go back to playing and we'll see how long this really takes Joe Biden, President Joe Biden, to get his jacket on. Here he goes. He's turning. He's turning because maybe if he faces the wind, the wind will propel the jacket in a direction where he can actually slip his arm easier into it. Oh, now Jill's helping. Jill is behind helping him. He's struggling to find that sleeve. He's looking for the sleeve. But sadly, as he's turning to look for the sleeve, his body's turning. His body is following his head. And that sleeve is just darting and ducking away from him. Finally, he got his sleeve on and now he is straightening his lapel, walking with his face mask. Oops, he drops something, bends to pick it up. Jill just looks like she can't wait to get out of there. And honestly, who can blame her, right? I mean, who can blame her? We all want to get out of there, too. It's painful to watch. This is our president of the United States. He's struggling to put a jacket on, dropping things, wandering off. Joe Biden there seemingly struggling to put on his jacket. The president was departing the White House helicopter with First Lady Jill Biden when the gaffe occurred. That's not a gaffe. That's not a gaffe. That's something worse than a gaffe. That is something that's more than physical. That's something that's mental. 
That's something that we've all known that has plagued Joe Biden since his campaign days when he would not emerge from the basement because he was afraid of his challenger, Donald Trump, that he couldn't face him on the campaign trail. And so the Democrats' strategy was to keep Joe Biden in the basement, and they cried about the coronavirus dangers as justification to keep him in the basement, away from the cameras, away from the American people, because they knew their pick for president can't even put on a suit jacket without struggling. That is not a physical ailment. That is a mental deficiency, and it's one that we all know this president has, and yet the Democrats want us to blithely go along and pretend as if this president of the United States is the smartest president out there. He gives the greatest speeches ever, ever in American history. He's smart, he's sharp, and guess what? We're all supposed to be oh so lucky we have him. Look, If this was just one example of Joe Biden's struggle to dress himself or to perform normal tasks that, say, a two-year-old knows how to do, then it wouldn't be a problem. We probably wouldn't notice it. It wouldn't make the news. It wouldn't make the international headline news. But after he struggles to put his jacket on and after he drops things and after he stumbles over his own feet. And after he reaches out his hand to shake people who aren't there in front of him. And after he reads the stage directions, stop talking, Joe, exit now, Joe, as he reads the speech that his writers write for him. And after he messes up that he's the president of the United States and says instead he's the senator, or calls Kamala Harris, his vice president, the president. And after he makes all these so-called gaffes, after all that, there comes a time where you got to admit it's more than a gaffe. It's more than a once-in-a-lifetime event. It's more than a simple struggle in a fierce wind to put on a jacket. It's indicative of something going on upstairs, something worrisome, something that we should all be worried about. If we have to give a play-by-play of Joe Biden putting his suit jacket on, it's time to admit there's something wrong. If watching Joe Biden struggle to put his suit jacket on is more exciting than watching an NHL game, something's wrong. Seriously. People don't watch and listen to Joe Biden to see and hear what the leader of the world is going to say and do because it matters. People watch and listen to Joe Biden because it's a break from their day. It's a comedic break. They're taking bets on when his next gaffe is going to occur and what his next gaffe might actually be. But more than that, it's a danger to American society because if you think that China and Russia and Iran aren't watching Joe Biden struggle to put on his jacket while he wears that goofy, beak-looking face mask on his face, and rubbing their hands in glee and thinking, this is the greatest president of our lives because he's the only president we've seen, even worse than Jimmy Carter, who would allow America to fall to hostile interests, to foreign entities. If you think China and Russia and Iran's leaders aren't thinking that, what a great gift to their Marxism and communism and tyranny, what a great gift he is to all that, then think again. This is beyond gaffes. This is mental issues, mental incompetence. This is inability to lead. And I have a guest today who works in the field of psychiatry. And she deals with people in her practice who have mental issues. And so, not that she's ever 
seen Joe Biden in her office. But look, when Donald Trump was running for president and when Donald Trump was president, the left, the Democrats, weekly brought out their psychologists and their therapists and so far to assess Donald Trump's mental fitness long distance, pretending and selling through the media that he had some sort of mental problem and that he was a danger to self and society in the world, even though there was no evidence showing such, even there were no signs showing such. But the Democrats always accuse of what they're guilty. So let's take a look at Joe Biden's mental competence through the eyes of an expert in that field. Dr. Carol Lieberman, she is known as America's psychiatrist. She is a forensic psychiatrist and expert witness and author of several award-winning books, host of a couple of podcasts dealing with psychiatry and psychiatrist type issues. And she has some opinion on Joe Biden's mental state. She's here to discuss, but here's a hint. It's time, she suggests, for America to invoke the 25th Amendment for Joe Biden's seeming dementia. Dr. Carol Lieberman, thank you so much for being on Bold and Blunt. I really appreciate your time. Yes, it's my pleasure. So you say Joe Biden has the beginning stages of dementia made worse by his COVID uh, twice COVID, and that it's time to invoke the 25th Amendment. Can you talk about what you mean? Sure. Well, as you, I think, maybe know already, I have been talking about this since he was running for president. I've been talking about his having encroaching dementia. And we have all witnessed that it has been encroaching more and more as time has gone by. And um, now that he has had COVID twice, um, you know, we, when a lot of people, the majority of people, perhaps, um, when they have COVID, they get brain fog. So when he got COVID the first time, he had brain fog on top of encroaching dementia, basically another brain fog. And now, then he took Paxlovid, and uh, it recurred just like it did with Fauci. And then he had it again, had COVID again, and that's more brain fog. So what I, why I've been trying to bring this to people's attention, um, the COVID aspect, is because that gives us, uh, or gave us, you know, now he supposedly is recovered from the second um, bout of COVID, but it, it has given us uh, an opportunity to invoke the 25th Amendment with, without uh, embarrassing him, you know, by being gracious. And because he would never, he has never admitted that he has any kind of dementia, encroaching or otherwise. And this would be a, a sort of a gracious way of um, of using it, of using the 25th Amendment, showing that you know he was not fit to hold office. And and we kind of missed the boat, I think. <laughs> now your background is as a board certified psychiatrist uh, in Beverly Hills, right? That's where you're located. Yes, and I'm also a forensic psychiatrist, so I have never, I guess I need to say, I have never examined Joe Biden personally. I did write a letter that was published in American Greatness inviting him to take the test that I give as a forensic psychiatrist when there's a case of, where there's a question of competency, you know, of mental competency. And uh, I'm still waiting for the phone to ring. <laughs> yes, <laughs> all, all of America is waiting for that, <laughs> for those tests to come. So what, what were the warning signs? You, you as an expert in psychiatry, uh, what were some of the warning signs that you saw about Joe Biden? Well, you know, starting early on, um, the most obvious warning sign was his forgetfulness, his memory lapses. And when he was running for president, you know, that kept, they kept being excused by people saying, oh, these are just gaps, you know, Joe and his gaps. And, um, of course, people who wanted him to run, and, and the longer he was in the basement, you know, the less mistakes they allowed him to make. Um, so that was the first sign. And then, since then, there have been signs, you know, where um, if he cannot remember something or doesn't understand the question, he does what's called confabulation, 
which is making up an answer, you know, to try to hide the fact that he doesn't remember it or doesn't know it. Um, he's had disorientation, you know, when he is at a podium and he finishes his speech or finishes reading the teleprompter, and then he turns around and he shakes people's hands that aren't there. Right. Well, you know, actually, first when he says, where am I, or, you know, looks like he's totally confused where he is, you know, there's no more teleprompter to tell him uh, what to do next. And, and then he has had episodes of shaking people's hands that aren't there, and, you know, that could well be delusions or hallucinations. Um, one of the uh, signs of dementia that he has that is the most serious um, is a deficiency in abstract thinking. So that is the kind of thinking that good chess players have, um, where they're able to see ahead many moves, where they're able to hold in their brain uh, a number of different choices and to see in the, into the future what, what would happen if they did this versus that, you know, like in the chess game, if they made this move or that move. And he, you know, has sort of like no uh, ability to do any of that, to think abstractly. And we saw the impact of that for the first time, the largest impact, was when he pulled us out of Afghanistan in an incredibly disorganized and um, haphazard way. And that has, you know, there's such significance in that, not just, you know, what it did to the military who died and got wounded and so on, um, and their families in Afghanistan, all that war, you know, but, but a much larger effect even is that it, gave, it was a signal, a green light, to world leaders, aha, uh -huh, you know, this guy doesn't know what he's doing. Uh, this is the time to do whatever you want, you know, in terms of uh, destroying America. So then we had, soon after Afghanistan, we had Putin, and now we have China, and, you know, North Korea is continuing with their nuclear mess missiles, and Iran, you know, I mean, it, it's just, it has made the whole world wake up, all our enemies wake up, and say, now is the time. I'm glad you brought up about the uh, chess chess game and his inability to perform the same type of thinking and strategizing that goes into a chess game because that seems directly tied to foreign policy. And as you point out, many of these foreign leaders are rubbing their hands in glee, seeing the time is now to cripple America. Yes, absolutely. And not to mention... Um, terrorists, you know, radical Islamist terrorists. I know, according to Biden, he thinks that the biggest problem we have um, is the terrorists, the parents, the PTAs. Those are the domestic terrorists, or the January 6th terrorists, the so-called terrorists. Um, you know, that's the worst problem befalling America, and totally ignoring the fact that, you know, the Taliban and uh, ISIS and Al-Qaeda, oh yes, we killed the second in command. <laughs> you know, that's his... Uh, that's something he wants to hang his hat on. Um, I mean, I'm not diminishing it. It's good, but it's not nowhere near. That hasn't solved the problem of radical Islamist terrorism. Right, and it certainly doesn't wipe from memory uh, the fact that he left Afghanistan in such chaos, leading to the deaths of American citizens and others. Uh, so if, let's just say that you're on Joe Biden's side, and just, you know, truthfulness, I detest all his policies, I, I detest all that he stands for politically, but let's just say that I'm an American citizen who truly wants Joe Biden to succeed. Speaking from a medical standpoint, what type of medications does he need to be prescribed or what type of things does he need to be doing in order to uh, succeed uh, with his health? Well, the first thing he needs to do is to take me up or somebody else up on take, you, taking these uh, neurological tests, these, these psycho um, neurological tests, to determine, you know, yes, indeed, there is a problem. Um, and then he needs to go to a neurologist to do tests like PET scans and MRIs and blood tests and all those kinds of things to figure out what kind of dementia. Um, Alzheimer's is the most common, but um, it seems like the most likely that he would have would be a vascular dementia because when he was in his 40s, he had uh, two aneurysms and he had a brain bleed and he's taking medication for... Um, 
uh, an anticoagulant because he has atrial fibrillation. Some of these uh, moments, you know, these senior moments um, that he has uh, could well be TIAs, transient ischemic attacks, from the arrhythmia that he has. Um, so, you know, this, the, there are tests to, to look into all of these things. Now, dementia, there's no cure, um, it, but it depends what kind you have to, that determines what medications you should take and so on. And, you know, Jill Biden, how she could just, um, obviously Jill Biden likes being first lady a lot more than she cares about the well-being of her husband. I agree. There's no, there's no way that a woman who loves her husband we just keep, you know, pretending that um, everything is fine. I agree. Now, have you seen Joe Biden um, get any better or worse since he's taken over the White House? Do you see that uh, his mental capacities, his mental facilities have gone down or up or stayed the same? Oh, no, he, he keeps getting worse. You know, and part of that, that's another aspect, part of that is, um, the stress of being, <laughs> of being president of the United States. You know, um, when you have dementia or any kind of physical problem, the more stress you have, the worse your physical problem gets. And so all of this every day, now, of course, we both know that it's not Joe Biden who's really the president, it's Obama, but, <laughs> but um, you know, who's running things. But still, there is a lot of stress in being the president of the United States. And yes, that has been making things worse and worse. We've still got two more years of Joe Biden, Dr. Lieberman. So what do you predict? Well, you know, I don't know whether we're, well, I don't know if he's going to last two more years. I mean, in terms health-wise, um, if he keeps going at this rate, uh, it's, it's, I don't know that he's really going to be able to, that they're even going to be able to prop him up and pretend that he's president like he, they've been doing, you know, and, to, with the um, teleprompters and scripts and all of that, it, he's getting worse and worse. And, you know, I was thinking this morning about how, what a toll this is taking, not only what he's doing domestically and foreign-wise, you know, getting America into all these problems, but it's really taking a toll psychologically on the American people. Because, you know, I mean, there are all these stories, of course, about how mental health in America is going down and so on. And, yes, part of it is from uh, COVID and, and, you know, all of the different uh, stresses that we've been having. But I think a lot of it has to do with depression from being the president of the United States, you know, not being able to have any faith in him and what's happening and seeing these, these enemies, you know, get um, reinvigorated because of how weak Joe Biden is and how weak, you know, and the, and the, and the impression um, of America you know, how we used to, well, like with Trump, you know, we were America's number one. And now we've just sunk in the in, in opinion of the world, you know. And that, I think, is taking a really big toll on Americans, feeling not as proud of our country as we once did, and, and just all of this. So it's bigger than just his mistakes. Yeah, the, the morale of America, the esprit de corps, as the military would put it, is definitely uh, different in this administration compared to the last. Uh, I, I know we our time is tight and we only have time for another question or two, but have you treated or uh, diagnosed patients with similar, if not identical, um, symptoms as Joe Biden is showing? And if so, what was the timeline of the progression of their uh, downfall mentally? Well, yes. Um, I have, you know, diagnosed people with uh, neurocognitive disorders or dementia. Um, and then, of course, you know, I treat the psychological aspects and I refer them to a neurologist to treat, the, under, to discover uh, diagnose and treat the underlying cause, but the prognosis really varies tremendously. I mean, I've had patients who have gone downhill very quickly, uh, and others who have managed to keep, you know, sort of the same um, status, the same level of cognitive ability. And, you know, there are medications that can treat dementia, uh, you know, and as size on like treating the underlying cause, but like, um, or, or in part, that's what they're doing. So, 
So you can, you can actually, the earlier you treat dementia, the earlier you diagnose and treat dementia, the, the more you can keep them at kind of a steady level. But the more this just goes on and on, everyone keeps pretending that he's fine, um, the worse it is for him and, and for all of us. Honestly, it seems to me watching some of his press conferences and, and public speaking engagements, I get the distinct impression that he is just drugged up on something. Do you ever get that perception? Yes, yes. Uh, I know there have been those rumors. And it certainly does seem like that. Um, you know, uh, either sometimes it seems like he's drugged up in a sense that he's sort of out of it, um, you know, in a in a sedated kind of way. Yes. Um, and sometimes it's, he seems drugged up in a, like an Adderall kind of way, a, a, an upper kind of way. Um, <laughs> you know, so yes, he, behind the scenes with his Doogie Howsey, Doogie <laughs> Howser doctor, <laughs> Dr. Kevin O'Connor, um, you know, he could be on a whole, we, we don't know, he could be on a whole um, regimen, you know, today, uh, like you take the, the drugs to get you up, when, and then you take other drugs to get you down, and vice versa. They sort of might be manipulating him, um, you know, ma- manipulating his state of mind, uh, depending upon what he is called upon to do. And, you know, you would think that that, that would come out, or one would have hoped that that information would come out, like from the, wherever the drugs are coming from. But obviously, you know, not necessarily. And, and, you know, I was thinking, though, that maybe people should look into what drugs are prescribed for his wife um, that are really for Hmm. him. That's interesting. Yeah, because who knows what kind of uh, teenage party cocktail prescription pill party is taking place at the White House right now, right behind <laughs> scenes. Exactly. Just just last question because we're running out of time. So do you see any political will for this 25th Amendment? Because I know it's been talked about, but I just don't see that anybody having the gumption to actually and seriously push for it. Do you? That has been so frustrating. I mean, you know, as I said, I was talking, as he was running uh, for president, I was talking about this encroaching dementia. I was, of course, there was no 25th Amendment to be had yet, but it's not, you know, people have brought it up. I have brought it up over these, these years that he has been president, and I know it is shocking and frustrating that nobody is acting on it. I mean, I know, you know, the, the answer is, oh, well, but Kamala would be worse. Well, yeah, in a way, um, certainly, she's, you know, I mean, she has, she has her own problems. Um, but, and then, of course, then we go down, and, and you know, uh, Nancy Pelosi, interestingly, with her ridiculous trip to Taiwan, um, I think that that was to try to make her look presidential, so that maybe if they did, if someone did finally get up the courage to invoke the 25th Amendment, that it would go only briefly to Kamala Harris, and then it would go to her. She would, you know, Nancy knows where the bones are buried. So she yeah. would somehow manipulate it to come to her. I don't know. But it is a mess now, and it is only going to get worse in the next two years. Yeah, and I think you nailed it correctly when you said earlier Barack Obama and his ilk running the White House. I mean, they're, they're just going to milk Joe, Joe Biden for all they can, really. That's the way the Democrat Party exploits and, and, and steal power. Uh, Dr. Lieberman, I want to thank you so much for taking the time to chat with me on Bold and Blunt. Thank you for your insights. You're very welcome. You know, you, you know you have an image problem as president if the big question that Americans are wondering is not what your legacy will be, not how you will solve some of the world's problems, not how you will deal with foreign policy, not how you will win against China and beat back Russia and make sure that Iran doesn't develop nuclear uh, weaponry and so forth. Not those questions, but the big question is, does he have the mental stability to survive his first term? There are so many people out there who don't even think Joe Biden will make it until the end of his White House term. And yet, he has come out on several occasions and announced that he plans to make a second run for it. Yeah, even Democrats don't believe that. I want to thank you for listening. I want to remind you, if you like Bold and Blunt, you can get Bold and Blunt at edify.app or at washingtontimes.com and anywhere podcasts are offered. 
Thank you for listening. Tune in next time. And in the meanwhile, stay wise, stay bold.